In this video, we're going to have a look at similarity and we're going to focus specifically on triangles. Remember that congruency means that the corresponding angles are the same size as well as the corresponding sides being equal. And the symbol for congruency will be three horizontal lines. For similarity, the corresponding angles are also equal, but for the corresponding sides, they are only in the same proportion. This means that the one shape is an enlargement or reduction of the other one. For similarity of most shapes, both of these should be known. But for triangle, only the one or the other is needed to be able to say that the triangles are similar. So if you, for instance, know that the corresponding angles are equal, you can accept that the sides are in the same proportion or the other way around. This means that the minimum requirements for similarity of triangles will be three pairs of corresponding angles equal or corresponding sides in the same proportion. Example 1. Prove that triangle XYZ is similar to triangle DEF. Just like when proving congruency, we're going to start off mentioning which triangles we're going to prove similar, and then we're going to list the three minimum requirements. In the sketch, we only have information about the angles, so I'm going to see which angles are equal. Angle X is equal to angle D, and they are both 52 degrees. Then we also have angle Y, which is equal to angle E, and they are 88 degrees. And finally, angle Z is equal to angle F, both 40 degrees. For all three of these, the reason will be that it was given to us. Now we can make the conclusion that triangle XYZ is similar to triangle DEF. Again, you now need to make sure that the order of the corresponding angles are correct. So I wrote down X, Y, Z. I'm going to keep that order saying D, E, and F. The reason for the similarity here is angle, angle, angle. Now that we know these two triangles are similar, we can make the deduction of which of the sides are in the same proportion. This is done using the order of the two triangles. That is why the order of the letters is very important. We can now say that side XY and side DE, the first two letters, will have the same ratio as side YZ and side EF, the last two letters. And it will also be the same ratio as our first and last letters, XZ, and first and last, DF. So let's have a look at what this really means when I add some side lengths. So we just said that the ratio of side XY and side DE will be the same as that of side YZ over side EF. And finally, also the same as side XZ over side DF. So we know that XY over DE is a ratio of 3 to 6. And remember, that simplified ratio of a half means that from 6, I need to halve to get to the length of XY of 3. Or, I take the 3 of XY and double to get the length of DE. Similarly, side YZ's 4 is doubled to get side EF's 8. And then, they've given us that XZ is 4 and a half, but this time they don't give us the length of DF. We, however, know that it will have the same ratio, so our four and a half has to be doubled to get df's length. So df will be two times four and a half, and that is nine centimeters. So similar triangles 
makes it possible for you to determine unknown side lengths. Example 2. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Determine the values of X and Y. In this case, we are given that the two triangles are similar. Therefore, we can determine which side lengths form the same proportion. Side AB and DE will have the same ratio as side BC and EF and also the same ratio as side AC and DF. So even though sometimes it might be tricky to determine which sides fit together from the sketch, we can use our similarity. We just said that side AB fits with DE. Next, BC fits with FE or EF. And finally, AC goes with FD. And now we can substitute all the information given. AB is 11 centimeters and DE 33. This completed simplified ratio of a third means that triangle DEF is three times the size of triangle ABC. BC was given as 6 centimeters and EF is the Y value we need to determine. AC is the X value and DF is 24. To solve X and Y, I'm going to set up two equations by making use of the simplified ratio of a third. So first off, I know that the ratio of 6 over Y should be the same as a third. To simplify the algebra, I'm now going to get the reciprocal on both sides and say that y over 6 is equal to 3 over 1. Therefore, we know that y will be equal to 3 times 6, and that means it is 18 centimeters. But why did I multiply by 6? For that, you can see it in two different ways. Firstly, I divided by 6 on the left hand side. And to solve y, I need to get rid of that by doing the inverse calculation of multiplying by 6. Or you could have realized that these are two equivalent fractions. And because 1 became 6 times bigger, 3 also has to become 6 times bigger, and 3 times 6 is 18. Similarly, to solve x, I'm going to set up another equation. So x over 24 should also be the same ratio of a third. Again, to solve x, I'm going to multiply, and this time it will be a third multiplied by 24. That is similar to saying 24 divided by 3, which means that x is 8 centimeters.